In this video we're going to look at combustion as an example of a chemical reaction and use that to make chemical equations. We're first going to briefly review the concept of change and in particular chemical change. We'll then look at the combustion reaction and write the chemical equation for that reaction. Then we'll look at the law of conservation and in particular the law of conservation of mass and how that relates to balancing equations. Okay, so firstly, we have three different types of change that all uh, things in science can fit into. So the first one is physical change. In physical change, no new substance is formed and it can easily be changed back. So an example of a physical change would be the change of state from water to steam or from ice to water. That's a physical change. No new substances are being formed. It's all water molecules H2O. Chemical change works when atoms are rearranged to form new substances. So we've got those atoms moving around, new substances are formed. And some signs that chemical change is occurring is a permanent change in colour that can't be reversed, a gas being produced, a new solid or precipitate being formed, and energy being absorbed or produced. And this can be in the form of heat energy or light energy. The other type of change is nuclear change. And in nuclear change, atoms are changed internally. So the protons and neutrons are moved around inside them and completely new elements are produced. Combustion is a rapid exothermic reaction between oxygen and a fuel. Now, exothermic means that heat is released. So if we look at this burning of methane, which is a gas, or combustion of methane, uh, we can see that heat is being produced, uh, like on your kitchen stove, as well as light being produced, which are two of our examples that a chemical change is occurring. Uh, and this is through the reaction between the oxygen and the fuel, the methane. So we can write this in a chemical equation. And so firstly, we've got the word equation. So methane plus oxygen reacts to form carbon dioxide and water. Now on the left-hand side, we have the reactants. And on the right-hand side, we have the products. This is the convention that we use for writing chemical equations. And between the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we have an arrow. And the arrow symbolizes that the reaction is occurring in this direction. Uh, from the left to the right. So we don't have an equal sign, it doesn't equal that. It is proceeding from one direction to the other. So we can take from our word equation, we can just use the chemical formula for each one of those things to create the chemical equation. So we've got methane, CH4, oxygen, O2, goes to form carbon dioxide, CO2, and water, H2O. Okay, so now we have our chemical equation. Now the law of conservation of mass states that in chemical reactions, the atoms can be rearranged, but they cannot be created nor destroyed, which means that you need to have the same amount and type of atoms on the left-hand side in the reactants as you do in the right-hand side in the products. Okay, the law of conservation of mass. You can't just magic atoms into or out of nowhere. Now, what does this mean for our equation on the combustion of methane? So having a look at this equation, we can see that there are different numbers of atoms on either side of the equation. And we say that this equation is unbalanced. So what we need to do is balance this equation. So the first thing we do is we count up the type and number of atoms in the reactant side, the left-hand side. And we can see that we've got carbon there in the methane, and we have one carbon atom. Uh, we've got hydrogen there in the methane, and there are four hydrogen atoms. And we've got oxygen in the oxygen atom, and there are two of those. Okay, and now we go over to the products, and we can see that there's carbon in the carbon dioxide, and there's one there hydrogen in the water, two there. Now the oxygen, we have two in the carbon dioxide and one in the water, so therefore we have three oxygens. So you can see that this equation is not balanced. 
So the way that we fix this is by balancing it. So we take a two and we put a two out the front of the water. Now what this two out the front means is that there are two water molecules. So we've got on, in the product side one molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water. Uh, so now that we've made this change, we recount both sides. Now in the reactant side, we haven't changed anything there, so that's going to stay the same. However, the products, now that we have two waters, things are going to change. So the carbon is in the carbon dioxide, that stays the same as one. Now hydrogen is found in the water. Now this time, so each molecule of water has two hydrogens and we have two molecules of water. So we've got four molecules of water in total. And oxygen, the water has one molecule of oxygen, or what's correction, one atom of oxygen per molecule. Uh, and the carbon dioxide has two, so in total we have four oxygen atoms. Okay, so you can see that we're a little bit closer to balancing this equation, but we're not quite there yet. So what we've got to do is go back to our reactant side and get two molecules of one of those two, either the methane or the oxygen, in order to balance it up. And you can see that we've got four oxygens on the product side and two oxygens on the reactant side. Uh, so it's probably the oxygen that we're going to change. So what we'll do is we'll bring in two oxygen molecules rather than just the one. And we'll count it up and see how that worked. So on the products side, we haven't changed it again this time, so it's going to be the same, one, four, and four. Now the reactants, the carbon is found in the methane, and there's one atom of that. The hydrogen is found in the methane, there's four atoms of hydrogen. And the oxygen found in the oxygen, the diatomic element. Uh, and we've got two sets of O2. So that means that there are four oxygen atoms in total, two in each one. Uh, so we've got four. So now you can see that these two sides, the reactants and the products, are balanced. They have the same number and type of atoms on both sides. In this video, we've revised change, and in particular, chemical change. We've looked at combustion as an example of chemical change, uh, where a fuel reacts with oxygen in an exothermic reaction that produces heat. We've also looked at how to write chemical equations and the word and chemical equations uh, for this reaction, and the law of conservation of mass that states that we need to have the same number and type of atoms in the reactants and the products in an equation. And we've looked at how we can balance chemical equations to achieve the law of conservation of mass.